Wednesday, beautiful people. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, we almost into August. Almost there. Almost there. All right, y'all. It is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Trina Haker. Hey, Shayla Haker. Hey. It is July the 28th, 2021. Day 218 of year three of reading through the books of the law and the prophets. And of the three years consecutive, they count day 887. Today we're reading Jeremiah chapters 34, 35, and 36. And then we're going to pick up and read and fossilize customs on page 261 where we left off at yesterday. So let's go ahead and do the shaman. So we can get started, y'all. Yes. All right, y'all remember the uh, Shema is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we start in the verse 3. Remember, read the full chapter, right? Okay. Here, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you. And that you may increase mightily as Yahuwah, the Elohim of our fathers, has promised us in the land that flows with milk and honey. Here, O Israel, Yahuwah, our mighty one, he is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the post of your house and on your gates. And Yahuwah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yahuwah, our mighty one, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before you who are our mighty one as he has commanded us. Mom, shalom, shalom. All right, y'all. Let's get right to it. Jeremiah chapter 34, a warning for Zedekiah. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came with all the armies from the kingdoms he ruled, and he fought against Jerusalem and the towns of Judah. At that time, this message came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah. Go to King Zedekiah of Judah and tell him, this is what Yahuwah, the God of Israel, says. I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will burn it down. You will not escape his grasp, but will be captured and taken to meet the king of Babylon face to face. Then you will be exiled to Babylon. But listen to this promise from Yahuwah, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. This is what Yahuwah says. You will not be killed in war, but will die peacefully. People will burn incense in your memory, just as they did for your ancestors, the kings who preceded you. They will mourn for you, crying, Alas, our master is dead. This I have decreed, says Yahuwah. So Jeremiah the prophet delivered the message to King Zedekiah of Judah. At this time, the Babylonian army was besieging Jerusalem, Lachish, and Azekah, the only fortified cities of Judah not yet captured. Freedom for Hebrew Slaves this message came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah after King Zedekiah made a covenant with the people, proclaiming freedom for the slaves. He had ordered all the people to free their Hebrew slaves, both men and women. 
No one was to keep a fellow Judean in bondage. The officials and all the people had obeyed the king's command, but later they changed their minds. They took back the men and women they had freed, forcing them to be slaves again. So Yahuwah gave them this message through Jeremiah. This is what Yahuwah, the God of Israel, says. I made a covenant with your ancestors long ago when I rescued them from, your, from their slavery in Egypt. I told them that every Hebrew slave must be freed after serving six years, but your ancestors paid no attention to me. Recently, you repented and did what is right, following my command. You freed your slaves and made a solemn covenant with me in the temple that bears my name. But now you have shrugged off your oath and defiled my name by taking back the men and women you had freed, forcing them to be slaves once again. Therefore, this is what Yahuwah says. Since you have not obeyed me by setting your countrymen free, I will set you free to be destroyed by war, disease, and famine. You will be an object of horror to all the nations of the earth. Because you have broken the terms of our covenant, I will cut you apart just as you cut apart the calf when you walk between its halves to solemnize your vows. Yes, I will cut you apart. Whether you are officials of Judah or Jerusalem, court officials, priests, or common people, for you have broken your oath. I will give you to your enemies and they will kill you. Your bodies will be for food for the vultures and wild animals. I will hand over King Zedekiah of Judah and his officials to the army of the king of Babylon. And although they have left Jerusalem for a while, I will call the Babylonian armies back again. They will fight against this city and will capture it and burn it down. I will see to it that all the towns of Judah are destroyed with no one living there. Jeremiah chapter 35. The faithful Rechabites. This is a message Jehoiakim gave Jeremiah when Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, was king of Judah. Go to the settlement where the families of the Rechabites live and invite them to Yahuwah's temple. Take them into one of the inner rooms and offer them some wine. So I went to see Jezaniah, son of Jeremiah, and grandson of Heshabiah, and all his brothers and sons, representing all the Rechabite families. I took them to the temple, and we went into the room assigned to the sons of Hanan, son of Igdala, a man of Yahuwah. This room was located next to the one used by the temple officials, directly above the room of Masiah, son of Shalom, the temple gatekeeper. I set cups and jugs of wine before them and invited them to drink, but they have refused. No, they said, we don't drink wine because our ancestor Jehonadab, son of Rechab, gave us this command. You and your descendants must never drink wine. And do not build houses or plant crops or vineyards, but always live in tents. If you follow these commands, you will live long, good lives in the land. So we have obeyed him in all these things. We have never had a drink of wine to this day, nor have our wives, our sons, or our daughters. We haven't built houses or owned vineyards or farms or planted crops. We have lived in tents and have fully obeyed all the commands of Jehonadab, our ancestor. But when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon attacked this country, we were afraid of the Babylonian, Babylonian and Syrian armies. So we decided to move to Jerusalem. That's why we're here. Then Yahuwah gave this message to Jeremiah. This is what Yahuwah, the God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says. Go and say to the people in Judah and Jerusalem, Come and learn a lesson about how to obey me. The Rechabites do not drink wine to this day because their ancestor, Jehonadab, told them not to. But I have spoken to you again and again, and you have refused to obey me. Time after time, I sent you prophets who told you, turn from your wicked ways and start doing things right. Stop worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here in the land I have given to you and your ancestors. But you would not listen to me or obey me. The descendants of Jehonadab, son of Rechab, have obeyed their ancestor completely, but you have refused to listen to me. Therefore, 
This is what Yahuwah, the God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says. Because you refuse to listen or call when I call, I will send upon Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I have threatened. Then Jeremiah turned to the Rechabites and said, This is what Yahuwah, the God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says. You have obeyed your ancestor Jehonadab in every respect, following all his instructions. Therefore, this is what Yahuwah, the God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says. Jehonadab, son of Rahab, will always have descendants who serve me. Last chapter for the day, Jeremiah chapter 36. I love that chapter. Baruch reads Yahuwah's message. During the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king in Judah, Yahuwah gave this message to Jeremiah. Get a scroll and write down all my messages against Israel, Judah, and the other nations. Begin with the first message back in the days of Josiah and write down every message right up to the present time. Perhaps the people of Judah will repent when they hear again all the terrible things I have planned for them. Then I will be able to forgive their sins and wrongdoings. So Jeremiah sent for Baruch, son of Neriah, and as Jeremiah dictated all the prophecies that Yahuwah had given him, Baruch wrote them on a scroll. Then Jeremiah said to Baruch, I am a prisoner here and unable to go to the temple. So you go to the temple on the next day of fasting and read the messages from Yahuwah that I had you write on this scroll. Read them so the people who are there from all over Judah will hear them. Perhaps even yet they will turn from their evil ways and ask Yahuwah's forgiveness before it is too late. For Yahuwah has threatened them with his terrible anger. Baruch did as Jeremiah told him and read these messages from Yahuwah to the people at the temple. He did this on a day of sacred fasting held in late autumn during the fifth year of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah. People from all over Judah had come to Jerusalem to attend the services at the temple on that day. Baruch read Jeremiah's words on a scroll to all the people. He stood in front of the temple room of Gomorrah, son of Shaphan, the secretary. This room was just off the upper courtyard of the temple near the new gate entrance. When Micaiah, son of Gomorrah, and grandson of Shaphan heard the message from Yahuwah, he went down to the secretary's room in the palace where the administrative officials were meeting. Elisha, the secretary, was there, along with Deliah, son of Shemaiah, El Nathan, the son of Akbor, Gamara, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the other officials. When Jehudi, son of Nathaniah, grandson of Shelemiah, and great-grandson of Cushi, hold on. Oh, I skipped a whole line. When Micaiah told them about the message, the messages Baruch was reading to the people, the officials sent Jehudi, son of Nathaniah, grandson of Shelemiah, and great-grandson of Cushi, to ask Baruch to come and read the messages to them too. So Baruch took the scroll and went to them. Sit down and read the scroll to us, the official said, and Baruch did as they requested. When they heard all the messages, they looked at one another in alarm. We must tell the king what we have heard, they said to Baruch. But first, tell us how you got these messages. Did they come directly from Jeremiah? So Baruch explained, Jeremiah dictated them, and I wrote them down in ink, word for word, on this scroll. You and Jeremiah should both hide, the officials told Baruch. Don't tell anyone where you are. Then the officials left the scroll for safekeeping in the room of Elishama, the secretary, and went to tell the king what happened. King Jehoiakim burns the scroll. The king sent Jehudi to get the scroll. Jehudi bought it from Elishama's room and read it to the king as all his officials stood by. It was late autumn, and the king was in a winterized part of the palace, sitting in front of a fire to keep warm. Each time Jehudi finished reading three or four columns, the king took a knife and cut off that section of the scroll. Then he threw it into the fire, section by section, until the whole scroll was burned up. Neither the king nor his attendants show any signs of fear or repentance at what they had heard. Mind you, 
This is a Hebrew king we're talking about who is taking the words of Yah and burning them. <laughs> oh, Yah, your Torah is burnt. <laughs> Neither the king nor his attendants show any signs of fear or repentance at what they heard. Even when, even when El Nathan, Delilah, and Gamara begged the king not to burn the scroll, he wouldn't listen. Then the king commanded his son, Jerah Jeramiel, Sariah, son of Az Azrael, and Shelemiah, son of Abdil, to arrest Baruch and Jeremiah. But Yahuwah had hidden them. Jeremiah rewrites the scroll. After the king had burnt the scroll on which Baruch had written Jeremiah's words, Yahuwah gave Jeremiah another message. He said, get another scroll and write everything again, just as you did on the scroll King Jehoiakim burned. Then say to the king, this is what Yahuwah says, you burned the scroll because it said the king of Babylon would destroy this land and empty it of its people and animals. Now, this is what Yahuwah says about King Jehoiakim of Judah. He will have no heirs to sit on the throne of David. His dead body will be thrown out to lie unburied, exposed to the heat of the day and the frost of the night. I will punish him and his family and his attendants for their sins. I will pour out on them and all the people of Jerusalem and Jer Judah all the disasters I promised, for they would not listen to my warnings. So Jeremiah took another scroll and dictated again to his secretary, Baruch. He wrote everything that had been on the scroll King Jehoiakim had burned in the fire. Only this time, he added much more. And we're going to find out the rest of this story tomorrow because it was our last chapter for the day. All right, y'all. It gets better and better. Better and better. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and hop on over here to Fossilized Customs, where we left off at yesterday. Remember, if you want a copy of the book, this is not my book. Neither am I being paid to advertise this book in any way. I just gave you the same link that I got mine from Amazon. You can go there or you can go to his website, his uh, direct website, and order your own copy. Whatever you want to do. I ain't getting paid for nothing, right? Okay, y'all. So we... um. Stopped on page 261 at the seventh month. It's going through the seven Sabbaths of the year or the feast days, right? You call them seven Sabbaths. Okay. Let me see something. There was something else. Like so. Okay. I was reading here and I saw I, I'll remember it when I get to it. I may not even get to it in today's reading. Make sure I go back in today. I gotta make sure I mark it because I wanted to say something. Okay, let me let me just start reading. Okay, page 261 down, starting at the last paragraph, it says seventh and in parentheses Hebrew, then month. So the seventh month. A final warning will come on a future Yom Teruah, or remember Yom Teruah in Hebrew is the Feast of Trumpets, which is the first day of the seventh month or the seventh moon, right? Okay. A final warning will come on a future Yom Teruah, the day of blowing a shofar, shadowing the last trump. It comes at the first day of the seventh moon. On the tenth day of this moon, Yahuwah will judge the unrepentant by releasing reapers See Joel chapter 2. Yahuwah would judge the unrepentant by releasing reapers. See Joel chapter 2. I read that like it was more to come after that in that same sentence, but it wasn't as a period. Yom Kephar, the tenth day of the seventh month, is called the fast at Acts chapter 27 verse 9. Or you can also read that in Leviticus 23. It's also called the day of atonement, right? The judge of all flesh will one day look at each person and decide whether or not they are of the wheat or of the weeds and separate them as with a renowning fort. Someday we will be harvested, the feast of the harvest, called tabernacles or Sukkot, 
Sukkot is plural for tents. What is a sukkah? We are told to build a temporary dwelling and place branches freshly cut from trees of the brook upon it. This shadows our own bodies, our tent. The potential 70 years of our life are pictured by the seven days and we will notice the branches slowly wither and die over the seven days of this feast. These shadows of things to come will be understood better by practicing them. So if you've never actually practiced tents or the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Boots or Sukkot or Shelters, all those names is talking about the same feast, right? So essentially you build a tent and you live in it. It's like going camping. It really is. The kids will love it. You have kids, so I like going camping. Y'all don't meet up with other brothers and sisters to do it you can do it in your own backyard we do it in our own backyard right kids love it right and it, it, it it's it's a really really good teaching tool to help it to help them see as you're talking to them about the principles and it, you have something to marry the principles with okay so remember when we was out in the tent doing tabernacles the other day right and so remember this and they'd be like oh yeah so it helps them create a a picture in their mind and it fuses them with the principles so that they never forget it right okay we're told to build a temporary dwelling and place branches freshly cut from the trees of the brook upon it this shadows our own bodies, our tent. <clears throat> the potential 70 years of our life are pictured by the seven days, and we will notice the branches slowly wither and die over the seven days of this feast. These shadows of things to come will be understood better by practicing them. For now, <clears throat> we should observe the times appointed for us and be mindful that it is that it is not in the details of how perfectly we perform them or being critical of others as they observe them rather we must understand what these shadows represent spiritually and grow in our appreciation and love for Yahuwah and love for those he has redeemed as imperfect as we all are in our various levels of development we are all very special to him we are we not only are commanded to love one another, but also our enemies. We are the living temple of Yahuwah and living waters. And in parentheses, is Torah because we know the living waters is likened to the Torah, right? And the living waters, the Torah, should flow from each of us. Remember to forgive because no one is perfect. The, those of the synagogue of Satan must leave it and begin to restore what has been lost and therefore return. Uh oh. Is it doing what Uh oh. My computer just tried to do its automatic reset. It would have cut y'all off. But you would have cut you too, but I'm sorry. Oh no. I'm glad I saw that one. Yes. Okay. Those of the synagogue of Satan must leave it and begin to restore what has been lost and return to their first love. The word or the Torah is living and active. It is a double-edged sword and able to discern between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry, I keep trying to do this. Okay. Let me read the last sentence again. The word or the Torah is living and active. It is a double-edged sword and able to discern between the soul and the spirit, joints and marrow, and to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Next paragraph, the Jesuit Oath. The following oath is on record in Paris among the Societas IESU. You know, that was a, um, the IESU was like an anagram. It was another, um, one of those little logo type things that was representing JC. Okay. 
following oath is on record in Paris among the societies or the society, I-E-S-U. I, A-B, now in the presence of Almighty God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Blessed Michael the Archangel, the Blessed St. John Baptist, the Holy Apostle, St. Peter and St. Paul, and the saints and sacred, sacred hosts of heaven, and to you, my ghostly father, do declare from my heart, without mental reservation, that His Holiness, Pope Urban, is Christ's Vicar General and is the true and only head of the Catholic or Universal Church throughout the earth, and that by virtue of keys of binding and loosing given to His Holiness by my Savior Jesus Christ, He hath power to dispose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths, and governments all being illegal without his sacred confirmation and that they may safely be destroyed therefore to the utmost of my power i shall i shall and will defend this doctrine and his holiness rights and customs against all usurpers of the heretical or protestant authority whatsoever especially against the now pretended authority in church of england and all adherents in regard that he that they and she be usurpal and heretical, opposing the sacred mother church of Rome. I do renounce and disown any allegiance as due to any heretical king, prince, or state, named Protestants, or obedience to any of their inferior magistrates or officers. I do further declare that the doctrine of the Church of England, of the Calvinists, Huguenots, and of the other named Protestants, to be damnable and they themselves are damned and to be damned that will not forsake the same i do further declare that i will help assist and advise all or any of his holiness agents in any place wherever i shall be in england scotland and ireland or in any other territory or kingdom i shall come to to do my utmost to extirpate the heretical Protestants' doctrine and to destroy all their pretended powers, regal or otherwise. I do further promise and declare that notwithstanding, I am dispensed with to assume any religion heretical for the propagating of the Mother Church's interests, to keep secret and private all her agents' counsels from time to time as they entrust me and not to divulge directly or indirectly by word, writing, or circumstance whatsoever, but to execute all that shall be proposed, given in charge, or discovered to me by you, my ghostly father, or by any of this sacred covenant, all which I, A.B., do swear by the blessed Trinity and blessed sacrament, which I now am to receive, to perform, and on my part to keep inviolably, and do call all the heavenly and glorious hosts of heaven to witness these my real intentions to keep my oath. In testimony hereof, I take this most holy and blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, and witness the same further with my hand and seal in the face of this holy covenant, this day of Anno Domini and C. Dash McGavin's Protestant volume 2 page 256 well that was a whole mouthful and he looked like he is really dedicated to his cause <laughs> shalom hb okay the source of this jesuit oath that i just read clearly we don't agree with the pretty much the whole of what he said but he on the mission the source um is discourse and commemoration of the glorious mm -hmm. reformation of the 16th century. I turned that crap off. You turned what off? Julius clock. Oh, I know. That clock was bugging me, sis. Huh? Put some of this. And Alexa. And Alexa, thank you. I don't know why he turned it on if he ain't going to get up to the sound of it. She came not hit mom. I turned that crap off. Like, what? Jeremiah's clock. You do every day. I know y'all be hearing it in the background. I'm sure for the last, <laughs> the last three years, if y'all go back and listen move. to my videos, faintly in the background, y'all can hear his clock just going off. And I know I've mentioned it a couple times. I'm like, I wish that boy would turn that clock completely off. I don't even know why he use it. All right, 
She said she turned off the clock and Alexa. Okay. The source. This course in commemoration of the glorious reformation of the 16th century by S.S. Schmucker, comma, D.D., reprinted from the original printing plates of 1838, limited edition, published by the Word Publications, 1984. And it gives the address, P.O. Box <clears throat> 35695, Phoenix, Arizona, 85069, USA, right? And if y'all thought that was something, here is the Jesuit Extreme Oath of Induction. The Jesuit... Yes. yes. The Jesuit Extreme Oath of Induction as recorded in the Congressional Record of the USA House Bill 1523 contested, contested election case of Eugene C. Bonniewell against Thos S. Butler, February 15, 1913, pages, oh, that's a lot of pages, pages 3,215 to page 3,216. I, here's the space for whoever, um, name, uh-uh, no, leave this right here, it's gonna cause my papers to fall. Whoever is taking the oath, I, state your name now in the presence of almighty god the blessed virgin mary the blessed michael the archangel the blessed saint john the baptist the holy apostles paul peter and all the saints sacred hosts of heaven and to you my ghostly father the superior uh, clearly we know who generated the term the holy ghost it was the catholic church hands down right mom hold on to Chill. I took a little. You took a Okay. Play with, play with them right there, please. And all the saints, sacred host of heaven, and to you, my ghostly father, the superior general of the Society of Jesus, founded by St. Ignatius Loyola, and the pontification of Paul III, and continue to be present, do by the womb of the virgin, the matrix of God and the rod of Jesus Christ declare and swear that his holiness the Pope is Christ vice regent and is the true and only head of the Catholic or universal church throughout the earth and that by virtue of the keys of binding and loosing given to his holiness by my Savior Jesus Christ he hath power to dispose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths, and governments, all being illegal without his sacred confirmation, and that they may be safely destroyed. I do furthermore declare that I will help and assist and advise all or any of his holiness agents in any place wherever I shall be, and do my utmost to extir extirpate the heretical Protestant or liberal doctrines and to destroy all their pretended powers, legal or otherwise. I do further promise and declare that notwithstanding, I am dispensed with to assume any religion heretical for the propagating of the mother church's interest to keep secret and private all her agents, councils, time from time to time as they may instruct me and not to divulge directly or indirectly by word writing or circumstance whatever but to execute all that shall be proposed given in charge or discovered unto me by you my ghostly father i do further promise and declare that i will have no opinion or will of my own or any mental reservation whatsoever even as a corpse or cadaver, but unhesitantly obey each and every command that I may receive from my superiors in the militia of the Pope and Jesus Christ, that I will go to any part of the world whatsoever without murmuring and be submissive in all things whatsoever communicated to me. I do further promise and declare that I will when opportunity presents, makes, and wage relentless war, 
secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants, and liberals, as I am directed to do to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither sex, age, nor condition, and that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the wall in order to annihilate forever their execrable race. He just was born waking up every day with violence in his heart, right? This is horrible. Bonnie, shalom. Oh, look. Wait a minute. Let me, let me read this again. This is like... I do further promise and declare that I will, when opportunity presents, make and wage relentless war, secretly or openly, against all heretics, Protestants, and liberals, as I am directed to do, to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither sex, age, nor condition. And that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the wall in order to annihilate forever the execrable race. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poison cup, the strangulation cord, the steel of the poniard or the laden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatsoever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed to do so by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus. Who? I hate to cross his path. Now think. Do the words of these oaths reveal the love and the heart of Yahuwah? In contrast, he told us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, not to rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women and crush their infants' heads against the wall in order to annihilate forever their execrable race. It is obvious that an evil spirit has conspired to usurp control over the whole earth by deceiving mankind over many centuries, right? Now, we can tell why all this craziness is going on in the Catholic Church, and not just the Catholic Church, because the Catholic Church is the mother of all her whoremonging daughters. All the religions fall right under the Catholic Church. That's why you find some of the same disgusting practices that they do behind closed doors to little boys and to little girls can be found in the secret closets of all these other religions. And it's not so secret anymore, especially in the Christian church. It's coming out left and right, and it's like, <gasps> like they've been doing this all along. What, y'all just now seeing that? It is obvious that an evil spirit has conspired to usurp control over the whole earth by deceiving mankind over many centuries. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And that's found in Philippians chapter 4 verses 8. What's true? The Torah or a word of Yahuwah. What's the lie? That we only have to believe in Jesus and not obey the Torah? That's a lie. The seven sacraments are the primary tools used to deceive the nations. Oh, it ain't just because you don't call him Jesus anymore. But if you still believe that same foolishness, but you just change his name to a Hebrew term, it's still what? A lie. The seven sacraments of the primary tools used to deceive the nations. There are no sacraments and therefore no need for the priesthood of Catholicism. The ultimate objective of the fourth beast is to rule the earth from Jerusalem. 
Designs and plans for this are at least 1,600 years in the making, if not much longer. In the photo on the first page of this book, the Jesuit general, or Black Pope, stands to the left of Kennedy. The army of the Jesuits have infiltrated every modern government and slowly bring about the objectives of this modern-day Jezebel mother church with her teachings. I'm going to show you that picture, if y'all have it. Y'all seen it. I, when we first started, I showed it to you. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Move this. Make, uh, make sure YouTube can see it. Okay. Hold on. Okay. This should be clear for everybody now because at first it looked blurry to me. Bella, stop. Don't do that. All right. So just kind of look at it real quick. That's the black pope. He not like a black man, but because he wore that black robe, that, that's the black pope. So you know. Right? Jesuit general. All right. In the photo on the first page of this book, the Jesuit general or black pope stands to the left of Kennedy, which was a, a previous United States president. Mind you. Right. Okay. So remember, I'll keep all this stuff together while we're scrolling through this. The army of the Jesuits have infiltrated every modern government and slowly bring about the objectives of this modern-day Jezebel mother church with her teachings. Whose point of view should we consider as we learn the origins of our customs? This discussion could take place between you and your parents, your brother or sister, or a close friend you love dearly. You tell them what you have learned about the origins of Christmas, that it's really Satan's birthday, because this being was worshipped by diverting obedience away from the true creator of the universe. Observing Jesus' birthday is not a commanded activity, and in no way can our worship be man-made or originate no. from a formerly pagan you custom. Joshua's birthday? No, not Joshua's birthday. I know this. No, not Joshua's birthday. Cool. Is that? No. We, I'm, we, it's Satan's birthday in the book. No, well, he's the Lord's birthday, Jemai's birthday, and Dad's birthday. No, but they do have birthdays. But I wasn't talking about theirs specifically at this time, sis. Okay? Okay, yes, they are. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you. They, they have birthdays. They all have birthdays coming up. Actually, Dad's birthday just passed. Jeremiah's birthday passed. Joshua's birthday is coming up. Sia's coming up. Okay, Sia's birthday is coming up too, and so is yours. But Elijah's birthday is already passed, and my birthday passed. That everybody? Oh. Okay. All right, sis, this, this might get. Okay. Can we finish the birthday chat in a few? It is. You're right. It is. It's both of their birthdays. They both have birthdays. Okay. Oh. Okay. Josh and Sia have birthdays. And Sia have birthdays. Not Josh. You're right. You're absolutely right. Okay. 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 She done with me. <laughs> Observing Mashiach's birthday is not a commanded activity and in no way can our worship be man-made or originate from a formerly pagan custom. So you stop observing Christmas, Easter, and Sunday worship services, but they want to remain a pig, but they want to remain a pig-eating Sunday worshiper, regardless of what scripture says. I wouldn't call them that. That's kind of harsh, but you get the gist of what he's saying. Shalom, Demi. Yeah, when y'all come, y'all see how fast you create enemies in your family when you start uh, attacking them. You can give them truth or whatever, but with a lot of them, when they're not ready to hear it, they just kind of, they stay away from you, right? They stay away from you like the plague, and it's like... Ooh, but don't start calling them names like you pig eating Sunday worshiper. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. So you stop observing Christmas, Easter, and Sunday worship services, but they want to remain a pig eating Sunday worshiper regardless of what scripture says. 
they haven't studied personally and they think you've come in contact with some form of cult. You might say something like, if I understand your point of view about Christmas, it's okay for us to observe this formerly pagan ritual birthday of the sun idol because it's now revised in meaning and applies itself to the worship of Yahuwah and is no longer associated with its origins. Researching the origins of birthdays, they come from Babylonian astrology, not the guidelines of scripture. Research the word horoscope and see it means our watcher. This was one of the duties of the Chaldean priests of Babylon. They watched the skies at the hour of a birth. The person led by tradition is in a majority. Hold on. The, the person led by tradition is in the majority and believes by renaming Saturnalia Christ's mass and interpreting the symbolic ideas surrounding this solstice festival, we can consider the paganism purged and rejected and the formerly pagan founded ritual is applied to the observance of the birth of Jesus which cleanses the idolatry completely. Amazingly, it was just amazingly, it was just that simple to do for every detail of paganism. This is why scripture refers to this kind of devious scheming misleading behavior as masquerading, inheriting lies, strong delusions, washing the pig, returning to vomit, etc. Shalom, Moriah. Father Yahuwah has a point of view concerning all the celebrations his children observe. Do we take his feelings into consideration when we decide to follow man's traditions? If we only take the viewpoint of human tradition and never consider what we have inherited through human designs, we will never see the things of the world from the viewpoint of Yahuwah. And that I know to be the truth, right? Even today, it's a big argument. People people stand on the words of Paul. I'm like, okay, so y'all just forget what Yahuwah said, even though what Paul is saying and what Jesus is saying is going against what Yahuwah has said, right? They talk about inheriting traditions of men, but they themselves have, in, have inherited traditions of men. And they hold people to them. And those of us who break away from them and say, you know what? We're going to cling to Yahuwah and his words, right? Because they repeating him wrong. It's a, it's a, they done played a bad game of telephone, right? Because what they're saying is not what he has said. And I'm, you know, I'm leaders party right now. And I'm going to go hang out over here with Yahweh's eyes. Goodbye. Five, hold on. I ain't going to read all of this. Going back all the way up here. Okay. This verse continues saying the the folks will realize who he really is by his hands of might. They shall know that his name is Yahuwah. They will realize his name is not Lord or in parentheses Baal. Lord is another name for Baal. Not knowing the personal name of the creator. People today. Yes. I, I, I want some. Go ahead. You can get some. They will realize his name is not Lord or Baal. Not knowing the personal name of the creator, people today worship in a futile way with great, with great enthusiasm, fervor, and zeal and are in great ignorance as they go back again and again to try to learn. The prophet quoted above is telling us the things the Gentiles have inherited. Customs are only falsehood, utility, and there is no value in them. Scripture is what we must use to correct, rebuke, and train. If we find a letter written in the ninth century by a mere man who wrote about someone called Nicholas who lived hundreds of years before and thousands of miles away, how does that relate to our obedience to Torah? The Catholics teach the same traditions, tell us that this lad died at the ripe old age of 17. Hold on. I'm sorry. The Catholics teach that Nicholas was a saint, died on December the 6th, and was an elder bishop. Yet the same traditions tell us that this lad died at the ripe old age of 17. The traditions vary and ultimately lead back to Moloch, the detestable deity of the Moabites. Whatever the tale is, it is not remotely related to anything pertinent to our faith. 
Revelation tells us the dragon has deceived the whole world. How? Ephesians 5, 11, Bella. Ephesians 5, 11 through 13 explains how we are to expose the darkness. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2 through 5 shows the use of the tree in worship, an Asherah idol. Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 16 and 17 exposes the sunrise services conducted at Easter. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 30 through 31 warns us to not learn the ways of the pagans, nor worship Yahuwah in those patterns. And 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 22 warns us to avoid returning to the former paganism we are delivered from, which Peter compares to a dog returning to its vomit. If we clean up a pig or a pagan festival, it uses the pig as a representation of a pagan festival. If we clean up a pig, a pagan festival, it is still what it is in Yahuwah's eyes. Patronizing or condoning traditions that originated in witchery goes against the spirit we have been given and the words of life we live by. Idolatry is like adultery, harlotry in Yahuwah's eyes, and Gentiles engrafting into Israel are to refrain from idolatry. Acts chapter 15. Yahuwah's children speak his words. It's impossible to defend Christmas, Sunday, Easter, celibacy, holy water, steeples, pillars, bells, trees, wreaths, sacraments, relics, monstrances, purgatory, indulgences, and so much more pagan nonsense using scripture. If there are scriptures which condone the adoption of formerly pagan rituals as long as their purpose is revised and in the end lies the lives of men are delivered through doing so, then we can all return to our mother, the Roman Catholic Curia and Papal rule. The end would justify the means. The schism of the Roman and Eastern Orthodox Eastern Orthodox could be healed again and all the Protestants can be, reu be reunited under the teaching authority of Rome. And we know that it's absolutely not the truth, right? And, and he was saying that's not the truth, right? He said this is a preposterous thought that we would do that, right? We can just take these things and, oh, yeah, it used to be pagan, but now we're doing it all in the name of salvation. So we're using this to save more souls. Hogwash. This is not judging people, but the doctrines of demons which have replaced Yahuwah's instructions as sheep. We can be deceived very easily without the leadership of our shepherd. We need to ignore the voices calling to us and listen only to his voice, Yahuwah's voice, Yahuwah's voice alone, Yah's voice, right? As sheep, we all require to be, hold on, oh, as sheep, all we require to be deceived is to hear a good excuse or a rationalization. If we are living in the mind of the flesh, our hearts, thoughts fall prey to whatever the false teaching authorities dictate. We are the servants of the one whom we obey. Romans chapter 6, 16. If we have been deceived by human traditions and not search out the origins of what we do and why we do them, we are like blind men. We must test all things. We are doubly deceived if we encounter the truth and reject a love for it when we hear it. Because then Yahuwah sends forth the strong delusion that we believe the lie. You can find that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 5-12. through 12. But I don't understand why he don't just use the origin scripture right in the Old Testament when Yahuwah first said it, right? And he said it's in Amos. He said... Um, it's, it's the whole scripture about rejecting him, right? And he said, because you reject the truth that would have set you free, I'm going to reject you and not just you and your children too, right? And a strong delusion, right? All, that's the origin of that, right? Well, technically, that's the first time it's like called out, but you can actually see that pattern throughout that. Yahuwah does it that way throughout. Bella, stop doing that, okay? Just drink it normally, sis. Christmas. Am I laughing? <laughs> I'm 
Absolutely not. I'm going to take it and you're not going to think it's funny. <laughs> Christmas, Sunday, and Easter are witchcraft. The deceived people don't know they are deceived or they would not continue in error. Adopting pagan methods to worship Yahuwah is another form of golden calf. Adding to his word and performing something he never asked us to do for him can lead to death, as we can see in the example from the strange fire offered by Aaron's sons. That's a great example because they thought they was doing something good, right? They was feeling the spirit, right? We're going to be praising Yah, and we're going to go ahead and do this outside of its proper way of doing it. And Yahuwah did immediately, right? It said that lightning came and struck them, right? It, well, you don't read that part and um, you don't read it in the canonized. But if you read like the Legends of the Jews and some of the other manuals that has that full story of what happened, we actually read over that. You got to go back a few months when we actually read to that. Matter of fact, if you want to hear that in the title, um, no, actually, you will see the one where it says um, Aaron... Aaron is about to die. It was something like that in my title. But I believe it was the video before that where we were talking about his sons. I, I believe. I think. I'm going to have to check it. Right? Hold on. Let me make myself a note. Hold on. That's mine. And I'll, I'll put it in there. And I'll actually put, if you want to actually just read it from it, I'll put the link. Lightning and noses. Look, and I got to tell y'all, speaking of this, I got to tell y'all about this lightning dream I had late last night. It, like, woke me up. It was crazy. I haven't had a dream this vivid in, I don't know how long. It's, it scared me so bad I called my son in the room to tell him about it because he was in. I'll tell y'all about it. We'll get, we'll get 57 minutes. Right, let me finish reading this and I'll tell y'all. After we close, I'll tell you. Just in case people got to go ahead and get out of here. Okay. Let's see. Adding to his word and performing something he never asked us to do for him can lead to death, as we see in the example from the strange fire offered by Aaron's sons. Living by a transform, living by a transformed pagan behavior would never lead anyone to eternal life with Yahuwah. We are Yahuwah's people, and he says we will know his name, Isaiah 52 and 6. If we are not engrafted into Israel, we are not his people, his chosen ones. There is no promise or covenant with anyone outside of Israel. And that's absolutely right. Because remember, all the other nations of people rejected Yahuwah when he came to them with his Torah. We actually read over that as well. That was really good. That's a good, we should reread that or go listen to me read it to you. And it's back in there. Matter of fact, the title of that one is, Will Ye Accept My Torah? That one was so good. I actually think I got choked up on that one. Um, but it's so good. Go back and listen to it or, or read it yourself. There is no promise or covenant with anyone outside of Israel, which is why I brought that up. Every other nation said, no, go get somebody else your Torah. Israel was the last people, the last nation of people that Yahuwah came to with his Torah. And they were the only ones who said, yes, all that you say, we will do and we will obey. Right? If we are engrafted into Israel, we are not, if we, I'm sorry, if we are not engrafted into Israel, we are not his people, his chosen ones. There is no promise or covenant with anyone outside of Israel. Gentiles must engraft to partake of the promises of the covenant. See Romans chapter 11. You can also read that all through the Old Testament. And I know this is his book, but if I wrote it, I would have used the originating scriptures and not the repeated scriptures of this. Through stammering lips and a foreign tongue, Israel will eventually learn and the battle for who they will serve will turn. Isaiah chapter 28. He guides us into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Isaiah, I'm sorry, not Isaiah. Psalms chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, 27 tells us that the association with Baal or Lord worship Calls the people to forget Yahuwah's name, right? And we can see that, right? Even, even coming out of the church, which we grew up being... Bella, don't do that. Don't do that to the plant. How would you like it if the plant 
stood up and started doing that to your limbs. That wouldn't feel so good, would it? Don't do it to the plant. It's a living organism, sis. Talk to her. Call her beautiful. Give her something to drink. Not too much, though. She can't take too much. Just a little bit. You cannot drink. Well, she, what do you think happens when we water it? She drank it. Okay. So even though we grew up calling you Yahuwah by another name, in our ignorance, he understood. I'm so glad that y'all is not like man, right? Like I said the other day, they're ready to condemn you to hell if you don't say it just right the way they think you should say it. And if you're not the person they think you should be that's bringing the message or repeating what Yahuwah said, they're ready to condemn you to hell. Shut your mouth. You ain't supposed to be teaching. Anyway, Mom. woman, I'm like... Mom. I'm not even going to respond to you, Mom, right? Because technically, I, I, I'm going to start with my technically, Yahuwah has entrusted women to be the first teachers, right? Of men. We teach you while you grew up, then we give you to your daddy. And he began, they're both, men and women are both teachers. I'm going to stop. I ain't going to respond to some of them comments, though, but technically, you know, they're both teachers. All right. Um, but even when they we grow up and we were taught to call him by another name, it says they teach people to forget my name by giving them the names of Baal to call on. So as we were growing up and we were born into this, we were given the name of Baal in the form of Jesus, right, to call on Yahuwah. And in Hosea, it tells you that Yahuwah, he knows this, right? He says, so when he draws his people or he draws his bride out into the wilderness, matter of fact, Hosea is a almost like a complete representation of the lifespan of Israel and how she's been an unfaithful wife and loving other lovers and, and constantly calling out to other lovers and even calling him, right? Anybody ever had that slip up? Oop, I called out the wrong name. Woo! You know what? There's some trouble, right? You've been unfaithful, right? Calling out the wrong name. He said, my people call me by names of other lovers, right? He said, but it's going to come a time where he's going to remove every name of Baal from their mouths. And they will begin to address him properly. Ish, right? Ish. What is it? Ish? Yeah. Ish. The Hebrew word. I probably got that wrong, but they will call me Ish or my husband. They're going to call him by his proper name, right? And it's not going to be anymore that he said he's going to restore his name to his people. And she will once again be his bride, untainted, undefiled, right? And so even when we come out of the church, where we learn one pagan name, we begin addressing him by another pagan name and it's just it's the the cycle sometimes it seems like you go from bad to worse when it seemed like you're supposed to be going from bad to better but it's like wait a minute y'all seem worse than what the church is we got to step away from you too hebrew right and it's like what are y'all doing here y'all look just like the christian church just under hebrew, hebrew garb we ain't doing this mm -mm, y'all won't catch me up again jeremiah Chapter 23, 27 tells us that the association with Baal, Lord worship, caused the people to forget Yahuwah's name. Many of the prophets were persecuted for using the name. Zephaniah 3 verse 9 tells us that we will call on the name eventually after our lips are purified. Ezekiel chapter 39 states Yahuwah will make his name known. We all stumble in many matters, but we serve the same mighty one uh, i put well saying he put mashiach here that still kind of throw people off wait a minute we serve wait who do you know yahuwah yahuwah alone right i am the only savior we have to accept correction with humility but this correction needs to come from the word as we're told at second timothy chapter four the renewed covenant see hebrews chapter 10 verse 16 second corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 the word is the Torah of Yahuwah, receiving a love for it and having it written on our hearts and minds is the renewed covenant that explains why we love the commandments. Our immersion into his name is the outward sign, a pledge that he has circumcised our hearts. Colossians chapter 2 verses 11 through 13. 
shout it from the rooftops. There are many things kept secret from men. Men also keep many secrets from each other. They even deceive themselves by ignoring what they know to be true. What I am about to reveal to you is not even known by men at the top because, as you know, they aren't tuned in to Yahuwah's word. The secret is simply this. Those who are set up to rule over us are the lowest of men. Daniel chapter 4 verses 17 does not lie. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the command by the word of the set apart ones so that the living know that the most high is ruler in the reign of man and gives it to whomever he wishes and sets over it the lowest of men. And we're going to pause right here. We're going to pick up tomorrow with the section that says mesmerized by strong delusion. All right, y'all. We, we covered some ground today. We started at page 261. We paused on page 267. We read Jeremiah 34, 35, and 36, y'all. It is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. July the 28th, 2021. Day 218 of year three of reading through the books of the law and the prophets. And of the three-year consecutive day count, day 887. All right, y'all. We're going to go ahead and do the blessing. I'm going to share with y'all this, uh, this dream I had. It, it just kind of... Okay. The blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. Remember, the first 21 verses is the Nazarite vow. Yahuwah said man or woman could take it, right? It's a special vow, right? Okay. Consider it. Don't take it hastily, but really consider what's being required of you and if you can actually keep to it, right? And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise, ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Okay, sis, wait a minute. Pause before you go and turn everybody off. She know that that's the key for me to end the video. But I said that after I did the blessing... <laughs> Trina, I just saw your uh, comment. You listen, honey. She know her family birthdays. I know, right? That's her key to get up here and cut everybody off. So, but we're not gonna do that right now because I'm about to share this dream, sis. Okay? So go ahead, back over there, finish counting the little plant cuttings that you got over there, and then when I'm done telling this dream, I call you back. Okay? Okay? I ain't gonna cut it off yet. I still gotta say something to him. Okay. Go ahead. Go back over there. I will call you. I'm gonna let you cut it off. Okay, so last night it was about almost one o'clock in the morning. I had dozed off. Actually, I want to say it was. I think it was closer to two, and I had woke up. Bella had come and got in the bed with us, right? And um, so that's that's what that's what woke me up i was waking up like abruptly anyway then i heard my husband like calling out jeremiah's name it, it was it was weird okay this weird, really weird what happened okay now i'm not saying i'm about to tell y'all this dream now i'm not about to say that it's anything or something gonna happen but i'm gonna just tell you because i really don't know but it it scared it didn't scare me but it was crazy and Mom, it, I told on you. you told on me what you tell on me what i do sis you didn't let me in your bed. Oh, yeah. We kick you out of our room. Because we don't want you in our bed with us. That's our bed. Okay. So. I see the door open. Okay. Yeah, I know. It was cracked. You think it's, oh, the door cracked. I can come in. But. And it's locked. And it's, it's too hard. Yeah, I know. We heard you jiggling the handle. And we ain't answering you. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So, we'll talk about this in a minute. Okay. So, in the dream. Now, here. First of all, here's what's crazy. When my children, I, I notice, when my children get past a certain age, the only time I dream about them is like if it's a, like a right now warning, right? And that's what alerted me. And it, 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 it I'm going to say it scared me because Jeremiah was in it. And like I said, I don't know. It's like once they get, I used to call it like, I guess once they reach like an age of accountability, that's what I used to call it. 
Um, but after a certain point where they're kind of like independent, even though they may still be living mm -hmm. in our household with us, like teenagers or whatever, they 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 pretty much doing everything for themselves or whatever. I don't dream about them. Like I said, unless like they're in immediate trouble or something, then I'll see exactly what's happening, like what it is. It even happened that way, like with my um, my nephew with something that was that happened, right? Okay, so in the dream, and we were we were like all the ages that we are now, right? Like Jeremiah even his hair, cause he cut off his dreads. He's like starting over. He had the haircut like as like as we look today, like right now, all the ages faces. We look like that in my dream, right? So now, let me also tell you this because I think it's a time mark. I don't know what type of time marker, but I'm gonna tell you this. Normally, kids. Um, when you're going to public schools, they have like driver's ed course. And here, you actually take the driver's ed. And although they don't, they don't have the simulations in school anymore, they actually have the, the driver's school. And they literally, the driver's school normally picks up the kids from the high school right in front of my house. For some reason, they made the front of our house like the, the bus stop. For the driver's ed kids. I'm just like, how do y'all just pick a random spot? Pick in front of our house. We don't mind. Oh, okay, whatever. But Jeremiah, he's 18, but he doesn't have his license yet, right? So we went through them couple years where, a few years where we was homeschooled. And he was like, I want to go back to public school. He was like, okay, you sure you want to do this? Yeah. So he got in there. He finished the semester. He's like, I, I can't do this foolishness. Bring me back home. I don't want to do this. They, they, they doing too much. And he was like... I don't want to be around. They, 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 they too childish for me. I'm like, okay, Jeremiah, I'll bring you home. Um, but I had, I actually had a dream that he was going to do that. But it was like, okay, you want to go back to public school? Okay, fill it out. That's what you want to do. Then you do that. So he was like, yeah, no, mom, I like the way you teach better. So I'm like, okay, son. Um, so he doesn't have his license yet. But when he was he was supposed to been have it. But when the whole COVID thing went down, anybody ever had to go to the DMV during this period since COVID, it has been a nightmare. Here in Virginia, you got to make an appointment to go to the DMV. And when you make your appointment, your appointment is three months out. Right. So we went through this whole process. So in, in the dream, like I told you all that because I'm about to tell you what happened in the dream. In the dream, looking like we look today. We went to get in the car. My husband wasn't in there with us. It was just me, Jeremiah, and the four smaller kids. Mind you, Elijah not there because he grown. He out the house. He got his own family now, right? So we were leaving from our house where we live now, and we were driving out the neighborhood. And we and I, only those who actually know where we live can picture this. But there's a light. Once you get to the end of our neighborhood and you drive out of the subdivision, once you get out there, um, you can go one or three ways, like right across and to this other community, left to go get on the expressway, or go right like you're going into the next city, but there's a light, right? So we were going like we were going into the next city, right? So we made that right out of the subdivision. Now, Jeremiah was driving. Keep in mind, right now, even up to this day, I'm a little skittish about letting Jeremiah drive because Jeremiah didn't try a few shenanigans, right? And he didn't just try him and not, I'm glad he didn't try him in our car. He tried it still. If it would have went bad, it was a rental car and we would have been responsible. We had insurance, but clear, he would have crashed it. But he did jump a curb. He tried to show out for his cousins. I told him to go get something out the car. He decided to start up on a little music. Let me show y'all. I'm going to back up and do all this, not paying attention. Thought he was about to back up, put it in drive, trying to be cool. Got that music blast. And I'm watching. I was like, wait, what's this boy? What's this? Did, you, did he just start that car up? And, of course, he couldn't hear me from where I was standing. And I seen him. And not just the little, the, the concrete bumpers right there where you park. He thought he was going backwards, but he went forward, jumped that curve, jumped over. And, of course, his cousins went wild laughing like, your mama going to beat your tail. Look, so. That's why he do stuff like, well, he did stuff like that. And he did that when he was 16, right? So because of some of these little stunts, he didn't try to pull, going out, sneaking the keys and stuff. I, I No, when you get your permit and I'm um, keep on pushing it, it's going to be when you get your license. And said, matter of fact, I ain't even going to be in there. I say, either your daddy going to take you to do, do these little test drives. 
I said, are we hiring this school that drives the kids? I, they they already stopped right here in front of the house, so that's that ain't going to be nothing for us. We'll pay them that little $200 to take you on this eight-week driving class so you can scare the crap out of him. <laughs> so, so in the dream, though, he was driving, which tells me, see, he has an appointment coming up so he can go ahead and take his test and get his license, and that's coming up like the middle of August, right? So... In my dream, if I was to pinpoint this, it's a time after he got his driver's license. I'm, try, I'm trying to keep it up with like real time and then how it relates to my dream and how I'm looking at time markers, right? Okay, so, but in the dream, I noticed he, he had freshly got his license. Okay, so freshly got his license. I know in real time, his appointment is next month. It's in August. It's the middle of August. He got to take the test and he got to go through a little driver. So this... Probably if I had to put a time on it, maybe six months, even say a year. But I knew it would. He had freshly got his license because I was still in the car. I actually let him drive when we pulled out the driveway. I let him drive to where we was going. Although I don't remember where we were going, we were going in that direction. So as we turned onto the main road, like we're going into the next city, it's still kind of Chesapeake a little bit. But if you go down um, in either direction, about two minutes in either direction, you're going to hit a different, like you'll hit Suffolk if you go to the left, or you are going to Portsmouth if, yeah, you're going to Suffolk if you go to the left, you're going to Suffolk, I'm sorry, you'll go into Portsmouth if you go to the right, and we live in Chesapeake, right? So we were, he was driving, and there's like this curve going to the main light, right? I'm trying to give y'all all the details so I can tell y'all what's about to happen, what we saw, and what scared the crap out of me so we come around this curve and as we was going around the curve i could tell that i was instructing him i said like, okay keep your keep your balance i said i mean make sure you stand between the lines i said watch this curve i said because the other lanes they don't care about you they whipping around this curve and we were in the far left lane it's two lanes on each side so you got the two furthest lanes over here they're going in the opposite direction of the two lanes that we're in going and we were in the far left lane which is right next to their far left lane which is going in the opposite direction so as we were going around the curve i said you got to be mindful this curve is coming up sometimes they whip around there sometimes they switch over into our lane. so you have to watch out for other drivers you know so as we was going and he was driving and i was still kind of skittish a little bit so i kind of put my hand up on the stand we just got him a little bit make sure we was going around so i guided him around the curve and we was good. Now, it's not that long of a drive. It's probably maybe a minute from turning out of our subdivision until you get to this light where you can change. Yeah, I said probably, probably two minutes. Possibly possibly two minutes. If you, you really push in two minutes. But it literally take maybe a minute, almost maybe a minute and a half to get to the light. Just depending on how many cars or whatever, right? So, we got past that and I let the steering wheel go when he was coasting, right? So now the light, the stop light that stops us where we can decide which direction we're going, we can now see the light, right? And the road straightens back out. When the road straightened out, we, everybody was talking, it's just like a regular day. Think about you driving the car with your family and everybody, mom, you said flashbacks, me driving, right? Or I remember that, get out the car now. It was, it was an aluminum van. All right, look. So the kids, the four smaller kids in the back seat, uh, Joshua, Josiah, Isaiah, and Bella, and they're the ages four, six, eight, and ten. They all they all are two years apart, and so they all either they're all even ages or they're all odd ages, right? So they were having a conversation like little kids do, conversating amongst themselves, the kind of conversations they have. I mean, Jeremiah was talking in the front as I, I was also instructing him while we drive, right? So I was like, okay. But all of a sudden, as I was talking, I went to go look out the window and I noticed Jeremiah had gotten quiet, right? He got quiet like just like that. And I noticed it immediately and I turned around. But it was like as I turned around, I saw what happened while he got quiet it was like he fell asleep right it was like you you ever seen somebody with narcolepsy and they they're like in the middle of a sentence and all of a you like nigga did you just fall asleep <laughs> right it was one of those type things and i looked as i looked over 
I could see him talking and all of a sudden it was just like, he went to sleep, right? And I said, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. He was like, and when I screamed his name, I screamed his name twice. And I went to stick my arm back out on the steering wheel and I was going to go take my foot and put it on the brake to stop us, but it had already stopped. And in the course of this, we had um, the car moved over into the oncoming lane of traffic and it auto it was like when he fell asleep the car stopped now let me explain that a little bit to you when i dream about cars and i'm not sure about you but in my dreams when i dream about cars it's representing your spiritual life like my spiritual world so if i'm dreaming about me driving my car i'm dreaming about my spiritual life if i'm dreaming that my um Something is wrong with my car. My check engine light is coming on. That means, Pam, hold up. Something is wrong. We need to stop. So when I wake up, I'll immediately be able to identify that. And a lot of times when I'm driving, it'll just be me in my vehicle, right? Um, not that I've never had anybody riding in there, um, but it the you got to look at the whole dream and it, all of its dynamics, right? So we were, the car we were driving it what in a dream it wasn't jeremiah's car it was like it was our family car but it's not like any car or truck that we have now it was it was an actual car we actually we have cars and we have like a, a suburban and a ram but it wasn't any of those it wasn't the chargers it wasn't the ram or the suburban it was like this it was like this older type car i want to say it belonged to us but I'm not quite sure. I know that we were in possession of this older vehicle, right? But I let him drive. So when he fell asleep, the vehicle stopped. And when he stopped, we were in the lane of oncoming traffic. I said, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. And when I called his name the second time, it like snapped him out of his sleep that he had fallen in. It was like a quick second, but it was a, a deep sleep. Quick. And although it was a second, it was a deep sleep and I had to call him twice to bring him to. But when he came to, the look on his face was like a look of absolute terror. Like, what just happened to me? You know, and I'm looking. He was like, huh? What? What just happened? It never happened to me before. And I'm looking at him. I was like, I don't know. Like, I was, I was completely baffled as well, right? So I was like, okay. Let's stop. I'm like, we already stopped. I took the keys out. I said, get over. I said, and hurry up. Now, mind you, the cars weren't, although we were in the other lane, the other cars, they saw us ahead of time and they guided over. There wasn't like any fast. So it was like we were there. And so I was trying to hit the, um, the, uh, the hazard light so they could know, hey, look, pay attention. We're right here. So I said, uh-uh. I took the keys out. And I said, get over. And I got out and I walked around, right? Now, if you thought that was scary, let me tell you about what's about to happen. He got over. I walked around. I got into the vehicle. I put the keys back in, right? So I'm saying, when I woke up, I'm like, Father, wait, is this a dream about Jeremiah? Is something going to happen to us or what? Now, let me tell you what's about to happen. I got back in the car. I went to go start it up. And it wouldn't start, right? It wouldn't start. I'm like, what in the world? So I'm like, what's going on with this vehicle? And I tried to go start. You know how it's like no power, nothing, battery, nothing. But what happened was at that moment when I couldn't start the vehicle, I, we could see, you know, all the all the windows in the vehicle we were in were up. Kids were in the back seat. Me and Jeremiah was in the front. We've now switched. I'm in the driver's seat. He's over here. And you ever been in a soundproof booth? It was like our vehicle became soundproof to the outside world. We could no longer hear what was going on outside of us. Then all of a sudden, we looked up and the sky, there was the, you ever seen lightning? Lightning, how it just, it flashed in the sky, then thunder follows, or yeah, lightning, then thunder, and it follows. This lightning it was like it was turned on like you know lightning just flashes but the lightning it was it was this huge 
the width of the lightning bolt it seemed like it was like the width of our bedroom maybe like and it could have been it could have been wider than that but the lightning bolt was extremely wide maybe like the size of our bedroom which is like the width maybe like the size of our kitchen is probably not helping y'all that's never been inside of my house but say um maybe like 50 steps i don't know why i don't know maybe like 50 putting your heel to toe heel to toe walking maybe wide like that or maybe i don't know it, it was wide right it lit up this now my, it was daytime when we were outside but the lightning when it flashed it was like the lightning the brightness of the lightning made everything else look dark like when a lightning cracked in the sky during the daytime it made everything else completely dark right now you know how loud thunder is sometimes it can get it like shake the house and rumbles right i could tell that there was a rumbling monstrous sound that came with this lightning that would scare the piss out of you some people's spirit would probably leave their body if they saw this but it and it was like i seen it it, it was like the sky the sky didn't necessarily open up but you could see the lightning the width of it cracked the sky and it came down like at a uh like a angle not like straight down but it came down at an angle to where um like say if we was going to turn right and go to the city to Portsmouth, like right there, it struck over there on that side. And right there at that light where you turn, there's a FedEx drop off box, right? So it struck, it, it, it was like a streaming, like not breaking, not flashing, but it's long, one long lightning bolt as far as you can see up into the heavens like we can like see like past the clouds but you can see it went further than that it was extremely high and it came down and it was like it was like somebody had turned on the lightning and like like zzz, like it was just there it was like a constant flow of lightning it hit the spot where that fedex box was excuse me that fedex box was and caused an explosion an explosion could it literally could be heard and felt and seen what it was seen to us all around the world right and i'm like but here's what's crazy we could see the pandemonium that was happening all around our vehicle people getting outside of their cars there was this one caucasian guy that was in front of us that jumped out of his car and turned around looking at this site like like flabbergasted like all you can imagine the sounds and the screams of what was happening but inside of our vehicle it was completely quiet like even the children weren't talking we were just sitting there observing what was happening and we were at peace like we weren't freaking out like if you know my kids if you ever been here doing a bad thunderstorm they freak out Jeremiah, like, you always mad at somebody. We everybody who run in the room. Jeremiah, he don't come running, but he was like, hey, 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 I'm gonna come in here and sit with y'all. I don't know what's going on up here in the sky, but that was a little bit too loud for me. He come in there acting just like <laughs> I'm like, if you say if you scared, just say you scared, Jeremiah. I'm like, shoot, what is going on out here? Right? So, but if you know how my kids act doing like a real good thunderstorm. You would have been like, ain't no way them kids would have been quiet or wouldn't have said anything while all this was going on. It was like the vehicle, like I said before, it was like a soundproof. It was completely quiet and we just sat in there and all my children we were just looking around, observing what was going on while it was quiet. We couldn't even hear. And I can't tell you what it sounded like. I can only tell you what it sounded like based on what we observed and what we saw. But we couldn't hear anything inside of our vehicle, right? It was only what us that we could hear inside, but complete pandemonium going on outside. And if that first lightning strike wasn't enough, it stopped. Then it, it um like the, the light, it, it was like after that light and although it was daytime when it happened, it was like the brightness of the day, like normal, like now's brightening. It could seem it seemed like complete darkness now based on what we had just saw. 
right? So even looking at it, it seemed like it was like the dark of night based on what we had just saw. And then it struck again in the same spot. And I could tell it made this huge roaring sound across the world. And it hit that same FedEx box. I'm like, what's going on with this FedEx box? <laughs> right? But I think about it. I think it symbolized. I don't quite know. But it, it's kind of scared me. Because when this happened again, it was the same thing. It was like a long frying lightning like solid streak of lightning that caused explosions and everything and people were losing their minds right but we were sitting in there just just observing watching what was going on and so when it happened the second time then it stopped it started pouring down raining well actually it the rain started slow but it, you can tell this was about to be a big rain and i said i said okay and i tried to start the car again i said we gotta go i said we have to get back home right now i said because this is just about to get worse i can feel it um so i said okay kids i said we might have to walk I said, so I got out, I tried to start it again, and all four of the car doors like opened simultaneously, and all the kids got out, and they came around to my side, shalom, Kurt, shalom. Um, they got out, and they came around to my side. I said, okay, before we walk, I said, because, and while they were doing that, the rain started coming down hard. It was like an unnatural rain where the raindrops were like huge, and they was like, all around the people running like we got to get out of here but we were even it was like my children just like in a single file they were calm although everybody else was freaking out we were calm and they just kind of followed directions and they came around i said okay i said i'm not sure if we can leave this vehicle here i said but we're gonna have to leave it here and bella had something to drink it looked like you know how you go like to burger king or something they give you the cup with the straw but like the large cups she had one of those cups in her hand and it was a drink in it and she took it and she took the top off and she went over into the other lane and she poured it out and i grabbed her by her shirt so she couldn't you know how you kids running by you grab them by the back of her get back over here you know and i kind of grabbed it like that where i grabbed the back of her shirt so she wouldn't get out too far because the cars were coming although um they had to slow down now um because of how hard the rain was she it was like she got out she took the cup she took the lid off of it and she held both her hands and she poured it out into the other lane i said okay i said to move back over here we gotta go right and then it was like because the car just wasn't moving but we had to get back home like now and i'm i'm thinking to myself i'm glad we're not far away from home because we can make it there of course the rain would hinder us from getting there as fast as we could and just because now we'll have to watch out for vehicles and other things and all other different types of catastrophes that could be possibly happening because of the pandemonium now that was going on because of what had happened and we was like in this one spot but i could tell it had affected the entire world whatever this was right and so i grabbed myself okay let's go i said we gotta stay close together let's go home right and as i was saying that that's when I was awakened from my dream by hearing my husband call out Jeremiah's name twice, right? And I woke up and like, and it's like you wake up and you, and you take a breath. You ever wake up from dreams like then it's like, I don't know, maybe your spirit coming back into your body, but it's like, and I was set up. I'm like, what is in the world? I said, why do you keep calling Jeremiah? And he said, I want to come and get this girl out of the bed because by that time she had made herself back into our room and she was in our bed and she was laying between us but she you know kids sleep while she was laying across my husband with her legs had his, her legs on him and her top half on me because when i set up she was like right there with her head like this on my lap like the back of her head like i could look down at her face mouth wide open her head was on my lap and i'm like and I'm breathing like it was like I was out of breath. I'm like, what? In the world? Like that lightning was like nothing like I've ever seen before. The explosion, like the like you could see all like I say, although it was quiet in the vehicle, 
and we couldn't hear nor feel the rumbling of what we could see happening. And I think the fear only kicked in when I actually woke up and thought about it. But in the dream, we were completely calm and poised. But then I thought about this when I woke up. I'm like, I'm not sure if we were going to go that direction. I'm, I'm almost sure, like I'm 100% sure that we were not going to turn in the direction where the lightning hit because we were in the far left lane to go to the light. And when you were in the far, far left lane, you can either go straight according to like what the markings on the street today, real time, real life. In that lane, you can either go straight or you have to make a left. But I knew we were going to turn. Um, so we were, it was like we was going into the, the city of stuff. We were going into another city. Because even if you go straight, you're just going into shopping centers back there. Like there is not, it's not leading to like an out road or anything. There are like the Kentucky Fried Chicken and you got the Roses and McDonald's and like a little apartment complex back there. There's like no out road if you are going straight. Only people who live back there and needed to go shopping would have kept straight. But we were coming from our home and it was like we was going into another city city so we were in the left lane and I'm like what in the world is happening on that side over there right because and I thought about it I'm like you know what I wonder but because your mind had fallen asleep it was almost like a divine timing because I'm not actually sure maybe we would have turned that way I'm not quite sure but it seemed like the delay, and I know it is, it takes me a little while to explain it, but if the dream, if you just like watch the dream in the movie, it would have played out to where if Jeremiah hadn't fallen asleep, it was like he was put to sleep on purpose because it even shot him. It was like it stopped us, right? And all of us was in the vehicle. It had to put him to sleep in order to stop the vehicle to keep him from driving because had he not fallen asleep at that point in time in the dream where he did, it's possible, like I said, I don't know which way we were going to turn, but it's possible that at that moment where the lightning struck, we would have been turning right there. Because where the lightning uh, struck at, that's where people have to turn to go in this direction. So I wasn't quite sure if we were going to turn that direction or if we were in fact going to turn in the left direction for the lane that we were already in. Now... Thinking about real time, real life and how I teach, I teach my children to think ahead of time. I even drive ahead of time. So because I do that and I actually practice that in real life, I don't jump lanes at the last minute. I look ahead and I think about, OK, I'm going to turn left. So Jeremiah, with him being a new driver and I'm already being skittish about him being behind the wheel. OK, Jeremiah, we're going to be turning left when we get up here. So go ahead, look the way, get on over in your left lane, which is why we were in the left lane. So which be yeah. makes me believe that we Mommy. were, in fact, going to turn left. Right. So all these things I'm running through my mind. How I thought I was like, OK, father, what in the world is you trying to say here? I'm like, Mom. I definitely wasn't watching anything. Mommy. Well, I did watch some health stuff before I fell asleep, but this. I'm like, what in the world? And when Jeremiah actually came in the room, I said, Jeremiah, I said, listen, I said, we just need to cover all bases here. I said, are you doing anything? I, I told him the dream first, and he said, they're like, what? He said, what put me to sleep? He said, that's disturbing. He said, and I was frightened. Like, I didn't even know what happened. He said, well, what put me to sleep? I said, I don't know. I said, we both were shot. It just put you to sleep, but it almost seemed like it stopped us. Yes, baby. Tummy hurt. Your tummy hurt. Why your tummy hurt? You got gas. You got gas. Okay, I'm gonna give you some. Get. I'm gonna give you some warm water in a second. Hold on. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and end this. But y'all, he was like, "What?" And so I explained the whole dream to him, and he said, "That is crazy." I said, "I know, right?" I said, "He said, well, what you think?" I said, "I don't know." I said, "I'm gonna be honest." I said, "The first thing I thought about biblically, you know, after I'm running through everything, like, what and where was that? And what does the light mean? And why did your book? You gotta do this, otherwise, the laptop won't cut off." Oh, 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 what's that? Yeah, plug this back in. Um, um, I said, I um. I don't know because I was thinking, I was like, okay, is he doing something secretly? Is he struggling with something secretly that he needs help with? I'm running through all those things. And he said, well, you know, nothing other than, you know, what we've talked about already. I said, you sure? He said, I'm positive. He said, I don't know if it's something there. He said, y'all, please show me. He said, because I don't need to be put to sleep and I don't know what's going on. 
You know, so I said, but biblically, I said, I'm be honest. I said, right before you came in here, I said, biblically, the first thing I thought about, I said, remember when we were reading through the legends of the Jews, how we get the bigger story about what happened during Noah's day? Um, I said, before the rains began, so I said, remember, it hadn't rained in um, in the land. They they'd never experienced rain. So Noah telling them that the rain is coming they didn't believe it. I said, that's the first thing I thought about. I said, but in the legends of the Jews, it gives you the bigger story Whoa, of what happened. Got five minutes. Hold on, Hold on, I know. I'm about to end this. What happens if you go back and you read the legends of the Jews, it tells you that Yahuwah sent an earthquake before the rains actually came in order, it says, in order to, in, to frighten the inhabitants of the land to shake them to their senses in hopes that they would cry out to him. It was like the last ditch effort to get all the inhabitants of the earth to get their attention before the rains actually began to fall, right? But it didn't, right? And so after the earthquake, after that huge earthquake that was felt all around the world and the people still didn't repent, they didn't repent of all the wickedness and evil ways and, and the whoredoms and stuff that they were doing on the earth during Noah's day, that's when Yahuwah said, all right, Noah, go ahead and get into the ark. We, we, they, they don't want to listen. I gave them this last chance to do it. He said, I did the most drastic thing that I could possibly do to shake them and terrify them in hopes that the fear would drive them back to me, you know, but it didn't work. He said, so now judgment must happen. Let the rains fall, right? And he opened up the the floodgates and the windows of heaven but he also opened up the springs below in the earth i'm like oh shoot i said so jeremiah that's the first thing i thought about i said i ain't saying that that's what's happening or what this dream is i said god knows i said i don't know i said but what i do know is we were safe we were kept safe from even the sound of the terror while we just stood by and watch all the pandemonium that was going on, right? And I thought about Bella taking a cup and pouring out this drink into the other land. Remember, we just read about this in Jeremiah. He said, take this this drought, this drought, this drought, this cup, and make all the nations drink from it, right? So I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, then if y'all don't know Bella's name, Bella is actually her middle name, right? But her name on her social security card is Princess Ariel. Like some people put Prince or Princess. No, Princess is her legal name. Princess Ariel. But if you don't know, Ariel is another name for Jerusalem, right? You can find that in the canonized book of the Bible. It's found in one place. But Ariel is another name for Jerusalem. So I'm thinking about all the details of my dream. And I still don't even really understand what it means. I'm just, this is the second time I'm telling this. I told the jerk, well, my husband was right there. So he was listening to it too. And we all at a loss. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what, I was like, Father, help us. So we got to go, y'all. She read it. But I said I was going to share that with you. Um, So, yeah. that It it it, it scared the, the bejesus. <laughs> Not that the Jesus is in, but y'all get it. I was, I was like terrified, but not ter like not terrified because I saw that through the whole dream that my household was saved. We were saved from all this pandemonium. Although we got wet a little bit when we had to get out the vehicle because everything was happening, and it was like we had to get back home like now, right? So I'm just like, wow. So, but yeah, y'all. So let me go, Tootie. Her tummy's hurting, so I'm going to give her some warm water so she can ease her tummy. She got gas. All right, y'all. I love y'all. I know I already did the blessing early. Thanks for hanging out with me this late. Uh, all right. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Go ahead and end it to it.